Ah, Mr. Foster, how are we doing? Pretty good, thanks. How are you? Yeah, good. You're looking a little bit wide there on camera. You mustn't, you mustn't <laughs> have it on. Uh, you mustn't have it on landscape. It must be on portrait. Is it? Yeah, looking quite wide there. Chunky, what's your weight? I'm you know, weighing about ninety-five at the moment. Well, are you really? Are you that heavy? Yeah. Mm, all this secret on the table, and uh, I, I introduced creatine to my diet, and I seem to have put a little bit of weight on. Yeah, it suits you. It looks more like you've been on steroids than creatine, but. Jimmy <laughs> <laughs> um, S, you sent me, Paul. <laughs> nothing to do with me. <laughs> um, so, we've not seen you for a little while, but I do know I have inside information. That you've been uh, following a different training routine and uh, seems to be doing quite successful. Tell me a little bit about it. Uh, after you posted the videos of training four, four or five times a week, as many times as you can, uh, the sort of static hold and hook being pulled over and it's different uh, different positions, hugging, top rolling, that, that sort of thing, and yeah, just just getting on the table as many times as I can. And you, you you feel like you're benefiting from it now? Yeah, definitely, definitely. It, it, it makes a difference because in between sessions where I can't, for an evening where I can't train, if you're then doing weights, you haven't got all the tendonitis. You, you know, you're not hurting as badly, so you can actually pull the weights as well. Mm. That's a big factor. But yeah, when, when I have have then pulled and had good little wrestles, it's uh, I, I do feel like it's paying dividends. Are you are you getting on with the uh, young ginger nut? Nowadays, oh, uh, well, when he when he turns up, he like, I feel pretty good. I won't give too much away because it's only training. You don't, you never know until you have a ready go in a tournament. I've made that mistake before. Yeah, I'll uh, take that smile as a as a good sign, though. <laughs> um, I, I know a few people tend to find it like a boring style of arm wrestling, but I think any style that keeps you on an arm wrestling table keeps. Keeps you fluid. It keeps keeps you ticking over. You you know you're not when you when you go into a table. When you put sometimes when you pull in once or twice a month or whatever some people do, you 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 tend to just like the table's not your friend. You know it tends yeah. it tends to be this scurry place. And um, I think when you're on it literally constant, you're not scared of like you know if you go to this tournament this weekend and when you're pulling. You'll not be scared of trying an up now. You know, you you might still want to go for your top roll, but you'll not be scared of that hook. You'll not be scared of trying a reversing top roll or a posting top roll or a or, or a like a side swipe top roll or, or something because you'll be that used to doing them in training. I should imagine now that every every one of them's becoming as comfortable as the next. Is that true? Yeah, definitely. I think I was a little bit one dimensional, you know, a year ago, but. The more time I spend on the table, and the more that I'm I'm introducing this this training format, I'm definitely feeling more confident in using different techniques. Mm. And uh, speaking of this weekend, bud, if you were 95, I'm guessing you're not bothering cutting to the 90 for this one. So I'm tempted to try just to see how much I can cut in water, but it's because I have put this little bit of weight on recently, I'm I'm a little bit nervous that if I do try and cut that much weight. I'm gonna come in feeling not feeling myself. I mean, have you ever done any water cutting before or anything? Or if, if this was a, a you know if this was the British PAA tournament, then I'd be more inclined to just say right, I'm gonna go in at the weight I'm comfortable at. But because it's not, I was kind of considering shall I attempt the water cut for that reason. <laughs> Sorry, pal. A, a noisy cockapoo thinks he's cock at house. Oi. Uh, no, so. Oi. Ain't it enough? Sorry, Greg. It it does look like a sheep. I can't point my camera to him. Otherwise, I mean, if I did show you, I'd be scared of you shagging him. Well, I definitely would if he looks like a sheep. <laughs> <laughs> he does. Big fluffy cockapoo. Um. So basically, Greg. Um. You're not giving me a straight answer. So you might cut. So if you was going to cut this weekend, will you tell I, me how you would cut? I I'm I'm still undecided. If I'm honest. I'm still undecided. I, I, I'm drinking plenty of water. I'm getting the uh, the adequate amount of water in. So if I do decide at the last minute I want to go for the cut, then I can. But like I said, I'm, I'm a little bit undecided at the moment. The problem is, is it's been ridiculously hot. Now, when I'm working in in my line of work, in the middle of the winter, I'm normally running around in a T-shirt and sweating. 
So as you can imagine, I'm losing a lot of water as I'm working at the moment. So I'm kind of thinking to myself, I'm, I'm sort of drinking eight to 10 litres of water at the moment a day. And I think I'd have to be drinking maybe more than that if I was going to try and cut. I, I'm not too sure. I'm not too sure. Yeah, I think um, depending on what your diet is, I think if, you, if you're going to cut, you, you really need to have your diet in, in tow. You, you've got to be on like, a huge amount of carbs. Um, right. I, I do eat a lot of carbs, having said that. You do? Do you know, do, yeah. do you know how many you're taking in? Because I, I think cutting is a fine art, really. If you want to cut properly, then you, yeah. you've, got to, you've got to get it into a fine art and uh, you've really got to start counting. How many are you doing about? On an average day, I normally consume about 6,000 calories. Now, I'd have to double check. I was using an app during the lockdown to monitor how much I was eating. I'd have to double check how much of that was in carbs, but I know the, the main bulk of it was in carbs. Yeah, well, you, you should be okay then. As long as you've got your carbs up, then obviously you've got the water to lose. Um, what's your piss like? Is it orange or green? Or is it clear when you're drinking all that water? Perfectly clear at the moment. Yeah, so you're, fully, you're properly hydrated then. Yeah. Uh, so you're not too bad. Uh, That's one of the biggest problems I'm finding. I'm having to pee every five seconds. Yeah, well, when, when you're probably actually doing a water cut now without realising. Um, because you, you, when you start drinking so much water like that, you start re releasing an hormone. And um, it's like it, it sends your body into a, into a bit of overdrive. Because you're taking in so much water, that the, the, the hormone that it releases, I can't remember its name now, it enables you to keep to keep pissing even when you cut your water low, even so. Hmm. But if you've got five kilo in the morning, it, it's doable. But is it if you're weighing in on a Friday? Uh, sorry, if you're weighing in on the Saturday morning, you've got to start looking at oh well, is it is it really worth it? You know, eleven pounds to hold off is quite a lot to hold off for Saturday morning. If it's say could probably you know maybe an hour, an hour and a half putting bottled water back in. I think you might drain yourself and then not maybe not see the the fruits of your labour. You know what I mean? Yeah. If that, that's my opinion. I mean, if, if, if I mean, if you wake up tomorrow, yeah, if you wake up tomorrow morning and you're 93 kilo, you know, then it's well worth having a dabble. Um, you just have to lower your carbs, put your fat up, and your protein. But right. um, I, I wouldn't. I definitely wouldn't be going. Uh, you know, going all if you're 95 at this moment in time. I think it needs a bit more planning personally. Yeah, yeah. You know, um, what? Why is the weight at ninety kilograms? Out of curiosity, because I thought the the last tournament I did it was ninety five kilograms and well, ninety five. The thing is, what what we was doing is that because it's not officially a PAA event, yeah. and I was only going to stick to weight classes on it, minus eighty six and, and above eighty six, and, and have a triple elimination. But a few people messaging saying, ah, oh, but so there was a bit umming and ahhing and. You know, I think a lot of guys were like, they worry about weight uh, a little yeah. bit. So I thought, okay, then we'll just eliminate that process. We'll just, because we're not affiliating it with the PAA as such, um, I'll take away the PAA weights and uh, we'll just have it nice and simple, 75, 90, 105 and above. It's what people are generally used to when they pull in the other other tournaments, you know what I mean? So, um that that's just the reason be it. And if I'd have stuck the weights too close together, then it obviously would have been less people in one and more in another. It, and we don't even know what numbers we're going to get to be fair, Greg. I mean, we could is have. It, is it possible they could change on the day if the, one of the classes is particularly small? Or I mean, I mean, it's it's always an option. Let's say we get two guys at ninety kilo division, and you know, I'm going to say, listen, you've got an option. You know, you can, you know, you can piss off up or you. You know, I can't really change a weight class. You know what I mean, Greg? I think it's... I'm hoping to have more than three guys and if you decide to cut, but um, I really don't know where it's going to stand. I mean, this is just for you guys. I'm, I'm basically just putting this on for all the RMS as well. Keep marvelling me and keep saying, when we have having... When we have yeah, having I'm going to that. Yeah, so it's, it's, it's going to be cash as well, isn't it? So that's... I mean, yeah, not, exactly. It should be nice to have a tournament this year. Yeah, it's, so I think that that's just... Basically, why we've got those weights. I didn't really want to start sticking the PAA weights in. Um, why we're not affiliated with the PAA, and uh, as well, um, a few people were getting on to me about, uh, you know, lockdown weight and stuff. Because some guys are heavy, some guys are light, and I thought, well, if I just 
put it across the board and put 15 kilos, every 15 kilos, we've got a chance of getting an half decent class for one. And you know what I mean? It's not too big of a jump for some guys who are a little bit smaller to be able to pull with. So, I need to have a 2020 PA British this year. Uh, it wouldn't be a British, it would be a PAA UK and Ireland, right? Well, yeah. <laughs> um, possibly, possibly. I think we've only got the Six Nations in October, and then after the Six Nations, depending on what Neil does, if Neil does a British, we won't do one. And if he doesn't do it, then obviously we'll uh, look at putting something on. But well, next year is going to be a really stacked card. We're going to look at getting six tournaments in. So, fingers crossed, everything goes well and uh, we can push for that drug testing in 2022. That's good. Yeah, I had this conversation the other day and uh, I think it will be it'll be good. Uh, we, we've got to have the drug testing in place if you want to be considered for a lot of, a lot of the main tournaments. Um, we, if you want to be considered for sponsorship or taken seriously as a sport in, in UK and Ireland. So we've got about that as well, haven't we? So yeah, yeah. We'll, we'll see how that pans out. So tell me, who do you feel like uh, you want to you want to try and put to the sword at the weekend? Who's, who's the ones that uh, you've been you've been keeping your eyes? I'm not, I'm not even sure. We don't going to turn up bad. <laughs> no, I'd rather just turn up and focus on myself rather than be turning up thinking, right, I want to beat this person on that person. It's, it's a lot easier to go there with a, a plan in your head and. Try, try and put it into practice. Plus, it's a tournament. You don't even know if you're going to meet the people that you want to beat. No, no. I, I, I'm thinking if you're pulling 105, I'm thinking that might be a, a tasty little class. Who's likely to be in there from your, your club? John T. Murphy. Yeah. Um, he'll be the only one in 105s. And then I think Chris Fellows will be in there. Year old, year old four at 90 kilo. He, he's, up, he's up there about 95 kilos as well. Okay. Uh, I'm not quite sure. I think Matt Putik will be up there, I'm sure. It'll be uh, difficult to beat for anyone at 105. Right. Uh, most of my team are pulling supers. James Beach, Ethan, um, Stephen Rhino. Uh, I know Mitch Tuts. I know Mitch. As well as the amateur? Yeah, everyone's pulling amateur and pro, yeah. Right. Uh, that's something I'm, I'm keen to do is to whatever weight I come in at is to pull the amateur on the pro. Yeah, I'd be, look, I'd be looking forward to seeing how you went with Dave Kelly. He's only pulling pro, but he's, he's going to be 90 kilos. So obviously, if you decide to dump that weight, then you'll be going up. But then you'll, you'll run into uh, another match I'm interested in seeing you against is uh, Atom Bomb Tom, right handed. <laughs> how do you see that one going? Uh, I don't know. Tom's uh, got a pretty good record at the moment, hasn't he? Yeah, it's saying what I can and can't do, but until you get to the table, that's a different story. He, and Tom's been impressive. He, everyone he's come up against, he's beaten. You've been, you've been very coy. Yeah. I, I've got a, a sneaky <laughs> suspicion that you're going to be coming in extremely strong. Oh, I hope so. <laughs> uh, reports of Dean, Dean were telling me. So anybody else coming from Wales with you? Uh, I think Josh is coming up with me. Uh, obviously, Dean's going up the night before. Um, I, I'm not too sure. I'm trying to see if Drew Holloway will come up, but I, I think he's the only other possible. Uh, what what weight is he? Drew. Drew's quite heavy. I think he'd probably be over over 105. Over 105. Uh, and uh, big match at weekend. You, you never sent me a, a reply. And who, uh, who did, did oh, I do apologize. You sent it to me when I was busy, and by the time I looked at it again, I'd forgotten all about it. I, I saw the video then before I'd realised I hadn't sent the message. <laughs> How, how do you see it going? Um, I, su- I suspect you'll uh, you'll get the better. Mm, well. is, that, is that the one you're right now? Hang on. Which, which, which one are we on about? <laughs> Carl Hutchinson. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I suspect that you'll get the better. I, I think the video I saw when you pulled him, the only reason it went to straps was because you allowed it to go to straps. You, if I remember correctly, you had all of his fingers and you could have probably done a little bit of damage before, if, if not slipped, I think you could have done a bit of damage first. So I think he was quite lucky to get into that strap in the first place. And I, I think you were a bit tired on that day. And on a different day, I don't think it would even have been that close. So he's probably improved. So he's, you know, he's relatively new to the sport, I believe. So yeah, I mean, I, there is a chance that he's he's improved a fair bit. But I, I think I think he had a, a, bit, a pretty soft pull maiden that day. 
Yeah, um, even a better man on the day beat me fair and square. I'm looking forward to it. I must admit, I've not had uh, my teeth into something like this for a long time. It's been, it's took a while for me uh, to get my teeth into something, and um, he's, he's definitely give me something to focus on, if nothing else. I mean, I can't promise a victory, but I, I can tell you that I am going in there with a the mindset I'm ready and I believe I can win. So um, if he just throws me to the pad, then I'll shake his hand and I'll just nothing I can do but um, I do believe I will be victorious <laughs> let's hope that boy settles at this time <laughs> well I look at it this way you've got to look at the positive things of it it's snapped and it ain't coming back so it can't snap on that side again can it I hope not well there's nothing <laughs> it's floating in the middle of nowhere yeah but there's, there's nowhere there's nowhere for it to snap there look or if it snapped at the top, or the, what would he snap at the bottom, didn't it? No, mine snapped at the top. All all three tendons went ba ba bong. I've got one tendon, one tendon left here. What, what if that one like, snaps then? And what if yeah, it snaps at the bottom? That, that one, it's about it's about that. It's, it's like a car seat belt that one now. I should hope so. Yeah, it is. It's like a car seat belt because you get four tendons running over your shoulder and three of them went. But it's all right. I can, you know, when I first did it, I couldn't put my hand above my head. That's as far as I can do it now. You know, that, that's like full range of shoulder. But no, where's it being uncomfortable? That one obviously does that. But, um, you know, thank, thank, thanks for that, Carl. That's, I can get a full thing in, you know. Burn doesn't straighten all the way, but it's not too bad. You know, he's, he's disfigured me. You know, he's like... And then he sent me loads of private messages calling me uh, Quasimodo and... <laughs> <laughs> then, then telling me how he's maimed me and stuff, you know. <laughs> we, we, we laughed it off. Cheers for that, Carl. So you're ready. You're coming in strong. You've got new training under your belt. You've grafted all the way through you at lockdown. I've seen some ridiculous wrist curling videos coming from you as well. Yeah, I've been working hard on my wrist, hand and wrist. Yeah. I mean, I remember pulling you back at David Bradford's place and... Uh, we just messed around left-handed. And I thought, got a little poke here in this hand and wrist. I thought it felt it felt good. I've not felt anyone feel feel solid like that for a while. Um, that, that was that was where the BBC filming, was it? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I was I was very tired that day as well. I, I, I think I gave a pretty poor account of myself on that BBC filming. I've uh, I got I got making up to do because of that. The night before. Yeah, that was the night before. That, well, by the time we'd done the filming in the gym, that was the fourth time that I put my arm on the table that week. Yeah. And then I'd only been doing it sort of eight months at the time, so it, everything was quite painful. Yeah, yeah. I thought, I thought yeah, you had, you had some potential, though. You know what I mean? It's a shame that you were slow as a car toss. I'm <laughs> <open>. <laughs> well, that's the one thing I find. That's the one thing I find. When I'm tired, I lose I lose that explosiveness, the power. That's what, that's what leaves me. Who beat you that Saturday? Was it Chris Fellows who beat you? Uh, Chris Fellows beat me 3-1 on the left and uh, Mitch Tutt beat me on the right. What, comfortably or? Um, I, I felt, I, on the first pull with Chris Fellows, I felt quite comfortable. And then after that, he was just reacting a lot, lot faster than I was. Mm. So I didn't really get, get into the matches. I think if, if I had got a stop, it might be a different story, but I, I didn't, didn't slow him down after that. Uh, with Mitch Tutt, I, I thought I was getting the brakes on him, but you kept calling parallel pins. If you let it go a, little, you know, a couple of seconds longer, longer, Paul, we might have seen something different. Well, like a couple of seconds longer, your hand would have been in your pocket. So yeah. <laughs> This pocket. <laughs> well, I, I, I don't know about that. I mean, uh, if you can't beat Mitch Tutt in a, in a battle of speed, something going on. I told you I was tired. <laughs> <laughs> no, Mitch is a strong dude, but he is, he is quite slow. Um, do you feel like you suffer from performance anxiety at all? Uh, no, not normally. Oh. No, that, no, that's not something that affects you. I played <laughs> rugby. For, you know, a long... I know it's a team sport. If you have a bad day, you've got 12 other people well, in the union, 14 other people to, to, to pick, pick up the pieces, haven't you? But... Yeah, but I was never one for letting the rest of the team do the work. Uh, uh, well, I, don't, I, 
that's not what I've been told. Dean said that Josh, Josh and Drew are a lot, uh, a lot harder working than you. I believe. I bet they are. <laughs> I'm sure that's what Dean said. He's so biased. <laughs> right. Listen, we're not going to go on about you talking about about your uh, slow paced arm wrestling because uh, I'm, <laughs> I'm going to see it at the weekend. So I'm expecting a Welsh Colin Jackson. I'm Hopefully. not going to say Usain Bolt. I'm going to say Colin Jackson. Um, <laughs> good luck. I will see you Saturday morning and uh, bring the fire with you, Mr. Dragon. Certainly will. See you Saturday. Good night, Thanks mate. Take care. Bye-bye. If you love what you've just seen, please like, share and subscribe over at the In Mighty's Corner YouTube channel. You'll get daily uploads of training footage, podcasts, and following the guys on competitions from home and abroad. If you want to simply just be an arm wrestling fan, you can be one. You can pick your favourite guy and you can get behind him. If you want to be involved, you can become a novice, an intermediate and pro. There's everything from the grassroots level to a senior master. You can be 60 kilos or 200 kilos. It really does not matter. If you want to get yourself over to the Facebook or Insta, please follow the PAA UK in Ireland on Facebook or Instagram. Thank you so much for your time and your support.